Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass. This is Napoleon and Jasper. And if you want five tips and tricks for boondocking in the Airstream Base Camp, then stay tuned. We're gonna start off this video with a bonus trick as I'm filming, my door is moving. So if you have the Basecamp X, this door will only open to this whatever degree angle. And that is because of these window guards. So it's not terrible until a big gust of wind comes in and then it shakes the door and Airstream has this little thing here in order to prevent the door from hitting your window guards. This clips onto the door in order to hold it into place. This little mount is only held in by two screws in aluminum, which is not very strong. So the minute you get a wind gust at just the right angle on the door, this whole thing rips right off. This is the second time it has ripped off for me. So what I do now instead is I take paracord. I loop it around the handle here. I just tie it a loop. And then I bring it over to the propane holder. The clip just creates a loop that can open and close. And I'm not gonna be able to do this while I am filming. I take the propane bungee loop, I put it through this hole, and then I attach it down onto the clip. And that is what keeps the door open. Now I have this beautiful string attached to my Airstream door at all times. <laughs> So when I first purchased the base camp, I purchased it with the intent of boondocking and doing a lot of off-grid camping. But once I started living in it, for the first six months, I actually stayed in RV parks most of the time. The reason is I thought my tanks were too small, I didn't know how to boondock, how to find sites, and it really made me nervous. I ended up at a gathering of RVers and I met Kelly from Camp Addict there, and she and I started talking, and her tanks are actually very similar to what is in here, and she boondocked majority of the time. She ended up giving me a bunch of tips and tricks and that week I decided to go out, give boondocking a try and I didn't have any hookups for one full week. I learned a lot during that week. I did run out of water, I did run out of power. So yes, it wasn't the most comfortable week ever, but at the same point I learned a ton. Since that week, I have fine-tuned the boondocking experience, and now I'm off-grid and on public lands 95% of the time. So in those three and a half years since I started boondocking, I'm going to share with you the five biggest tips that has made boondocking in the Airstream Base Camp a lot easier. All right, the first boondocking tip is water. So I have the Airstream Base Camp 16. The 16 comes with a roughly 24 gallon water tank and a combined black and gray tank of about 27 gallons capacity. So for me, water is my limiting factor. Between how much I drink, how much Jasper drinks, showers, washing dishes, cooking, I can only go about four to five days with the water in my fresh tank before it is empty. These jugs, are my saving grace for that. I have two of these Reliance water jugs. When I'm at a dump station and I am filling up my fresh water in the RV, I fill up my fresh water in these tanks as well. These jugs are great. I have had them since I started boondocking. I just take these into town, fill them up, and they have a water spout on them, which fits right into the freshwater tank fill. So it's very easy to just lift these up, dump the water in, and I'm good to go for another couple of days. All right, tip number two. Sorry for the crazy glare, but I have the door open because Napoleon is enjoying the sun. So as I had mentioned, the Base Camp 16 has like a 27 gallon black and gray tank combined. So you cannot dump any black water anywhere other than a dump station. So it's not like you can just run your gray water outside like you can in some campers. So that black and gray combined tank fills up really quickly. If I was just going to use that tank like normal and not do any of these tricks, that would last maybe about four days. The biggest way that I can extend that tank is by this bowl. So this bowl actually sits, take my dirty dishes out of the sink. It's moving day, so that's why the bowl is not in the sink and it's clean. I take this bowl, I put it in the sink. That's where I collect the water when I wash my hands, wash my fruit, when I'm doing dishes. And then if I am in a boondocking spot that allows you to dump gray water outside, then I can take this bowl and I can just dump it right outside. I say that because you have to be very careful of where you dump your gray water outside. Some places like a wildlife refuge won't let you dump your gray water outside. If you're in the desert, you have to be really careful not to cause 
excess erosion. So there's a lot to consider if you're going to dump your gray water outside. But if you can, this simple bowl, which is like 10 or $15, will literally extend my gray and black water tank to seven to 11 days just by doing the bowl. I use metal bowls, metal plates, things like that all the time. So I'm always doing dishes. So for me, being able to collect my dishwater is huge. Tip number three is going to be probably the grossest one. And some people are going to decide they don't want to do this, which is totally up to you. But for me, this is another way that I can take my black and gray tank comfortably extend it seven to 11 days. And if I am really, really frugal with my showers, I can do 14 days on this black and gray tank. So how do I do that? I do not put toilet paper down the toilet. So that is actually a plastic cereal holder that I bought at a grocery store. I line it with a plastic bag and that is where I put my toilet paper and it does not go down the toilet. Toilet paper takes up a lot of space. So once you start throwing your toilet paper into some sort of a garbage can, you're gonna notice how quickly it adds up. So just think about all that toilet paper being in your black and gray tank, taking up a ton of space. Now, there are some really good videos out there on how to extend your black tank. There's one by Irene Iron Fitness specifically, which I think is really great. They go into all the details of how to do the toilet paper, mix it with wipes, different things like that. So it really comes down to your comfort level if you wanna do that or not, but it is huge in terms of savings for the black and gray tank. Tip number four, get some sort of power source that you are very comfortable with, that gives you enough power, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Some people do generators. I decided to go the lithium and the solar route. So I have the Airstream factory solar package on the roof, which is 180 watts of ZAMP panels. And then I purchased a ZAMP solar suitcase, which plugs into this little ZAMP outlet out here. I don't have it out today because I don't always pull it out unless I need it. I've only been at this spot on the weekend and I am leaving before the work week starts, so I don't need the extra power. The rooftop are fine. For me, I love the solar setup because it's quiet. I boondock for the peace, the serenity, and I don't want to hear a generator going. So when I was buying the base camp, the solar panels were already on there and I bought the base camp back in a day where you could actually negotiate off MSRP. So it was absolutely worth it to me to get the solar on the roof. If you are trying to save money up front and you don't want to pay, I think it's two or $3,000 for the solar package. So the nice part is having this ZAMP outlet on the outside is a really easy way to increase the amount of panels that you have without going up on the roof, mounting them, running the wiring, etc. You just have to have a place to store that suitcase panel. The other huge thing that made a difference for me is lithium batteries. I'm standing in the kitchen to talk to you about batteries because in the base camp 16, the batteries are underneath all of that. It is built into a battery box underneath the cupboard floor. It is a pain to get to. But along with the solar, I ended up upgrading my AGM batteries to lithium. My AGM batteries, I was not aware when I first bought the RV that you cannot run them below 50%, otherwise it starts to reduce the capacity of them. So after six months, I had already started to damage my batteries because I was constantly running them really low because I charge two laptops for work. And then I also have all my hotspots, my personal items. I use a lot of power. So I was in the market for new batteries anyway. I had a friend camping with me as well who offered to install them. So the stars aligned and I ended up going lithium. I also ended up getting a 2000 watt inverter, a Victron solar controller and battery monitor, and I upgraded all of the electrical. I would say that is the best thing I ever did for the base camp in terms of the boondocking capability. I can now go four to five days during cloudy weather without even thinking about it and be completely fine off of the lithium batteries. That is supplemented with having the rooftop and the portable solar panels because even on a cloudy day, you do get a little bit of solar. But with the AGMs, there were mornings where after one cloudy day, I would wake up, I would have to rush to an RV park charge everything up so I could work for that day. But with the lithiums, I've only had to do that once. I was camping in Colorado close to winter time and I had snow pile up on the roof and I don't have a way to actually clean those panels off and I end up running low on power. But otherwise, 
I boondock without even worrying about power now. It is amazing. I actually love the Battleborns and the Lithium setup so much that with the truck camper build, I reached out to Battleborn. I asked if they wanted to sponsor the electrical build and they said yes. So I will have a very similar setup in the truck camper. So I'm excited to show that to you guys when I get to renovating the truck camper. Hey, you gotta be leashed. Come here. Come here. Oh, so close. Hi. Nope. I need to leash you. Ah, there we go. If I had to do everything again in the base camp, I would absolutely do it the exact same way I did it. I would have Airstream install the rooftop solar. That way I don't have to worry about running wiring behind the walls, mounting to the roof, anything like that. It was all pre-wired, ready to go. The Battleborn lithium batteries, the Victron components, all of that I would still do aftermarket with a third party company or try DIY. Although with the base camp, the way their battery boxes, it's actually really a nightmare to get the batteries in there. Mine had to be modified and cut about two inches of the battery box off in order to get the batteries in. There was also a lot of blood when my friend was installing it. It was, it was not pretty. So I would definitely hire somebody to do it, but I know a lot of people have done it DIY. And then I would absolutely do the deployable panels again. I bought mine used, so it's 160 watts. That's just what it was. I would buy a bigger suitcase if they have one. It's just nice to have more solar and then you don't have to worry about it. Hi. Would you like to come up? And the fifth and final tip camp with a cat or reduce the number of places that mice can come into your RV. I used to get so many mice in the base camp and it took me a really long time to figure out where they were coming from. Thankfully, this guy is a really good mouser and the minute he heard a mouse, he would go on duty and usually within an hour or two, he would have that mouse, takes care of him. He's earned his rent. He's definitely earned his rent. So where have the mice come in? I have plugged up two different spots and since then never had any mice. So the first spot is up here in the front behind the propane tank are the fridge vent covers. So if you have a 2017, 2018, and I think 2019 base camp, you may have, unless it's been replaced, the Dometic three-way fridge. Are you leaving me? Bye. So the Dometic three-way fridge runs off two versions of electric and propane. The propane actually requires that the fridge is vented. So behind the propane cover, there are two vents. These are open into the interior of the base camp. They go directly behind the fridge, which then goes into your cupboards in the kitchen. When I was sleeping at night, I would either hear them in the cupboard underneath the sink or in the bench where the truma is. So I'm pretty sure the mice under the sink were coming in through these fridge vents. If you're gonna keep the three-way Dometic fridge, then there are ways to pull off these panels, line them with a grate so that air can still flow in, but the mice can't get in. I also had leak problems with these fridge vents. So I ended up working with Airstream and getting a completely new Novacool all-electric fridge. And when they installed that, they were able to take these fridge vents and just put a big old piece of aluminum over them. And now there are no more holes on the front. The second place that I plugged up is in the back area of the frame here. So I had read on one of the Airstream forums that there were these holes in the back of the frame. There was once I was camping in Colorado, I actually had a chipmunk inside the RV. So definitely large holes that critters could get in. When I saw it originally, you would assume that such a large open area would have some sort of cap at some point or some sort of intended purpose. So I called the Airstream factory. I asked them about these. They don't think they have any particular use. So they said it was completely okay to cover them up. I was camping in a spot where I was getting four to five mice a night. So I did a temporary fix about two years ago to take steel wool, shove it up into the frame and then cover it with duct tape. My temporary fix is still there. Someday I really wanna get proper venting or metal guards bolt them on there and really make it a permanent fix. But for now, my duct tape is still holding. So now that those two areas are plugged up, I have been mice free. I even went back to that spot where I was getting four to five mice a night and I didn't get anything. So I think the problem is finally fixed. Now that I'm under here looking at these, my duct tape's starting to come off. I think it is time Next time I'm near a hardware store to do a permanent fix on those. So duct tape in this application has about a two year lifespan is what I'm learning. And a bonus tip if you are boondocking with animals, 
put some sort of blanket on the bed to protect your sheets. So there is an insane amount of dirt that is gonna end up on Napoleon and Jasper. They're gonna bring it in, even if I try to clean it off, either on their paws, in their fur or something, and then they jump directly on the bed. And it is a great way to get dirt cactus, mud, everything inside your bed. So I keep the edges of the bed very tightly tucked in during the day. And then I put this blanket on top. I can take it and shake it outside, get a lot of the dirt off and put it back. So this definitely helps when having pets. All right, that is it. Those are my top five tricks and tips for boondocking in the base camp. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.